and crafty friends, this is the Paper Chef here. Yesterday, I created snowman tic-tac treats using the Brother Scan and Cut. I showed you how to cut out these circles, how to cut out the inside, how to cut out the carrot nose, and then we assembled them. They're super cute. And it was such a popular video that some of you asked if I could create or share the measurements for the smaller tic-tac treats. So just to tell you where we're at, is I had sort of an epiphany. I was, we were, we were making, I was making Tic Tac treats. We made the large ones yesterday and now I'm making the small ones. And then I said, well, why am I cutting out two circles for this part when I can use the Brother Scan and Cut to fuse circles together? So let me show you what I mean. So in today's tutorial, I'm gonna actually show you how to create Tic Tac treats, but instead of creating all separate circles, I'm gonna show you how to make the whole snowman shape. And then we're gonna punch through the little scallop circle for the belly so that the Tic Tacs show through. Okay, so that's what we're gonna do. And what we're not gonna do, we're gonna also cut out the carrot nose. What we're not gonna do is cut out the scarf and the hat. Okay, I did, I've done loads of tutorials on how to cut out stamped images, but just to let you know where the scarf and the hat came from, it's this retired set by Stampin' Up! called Snow Place. And that's where I got the scarf and I, I stamped it in cherry cobbler and that's where I got the hat. Okay, so you can embellish your snowman that we're gonna make today with anything that you already have in your craft arsenal. Okay, let's get started. I'm gonna pull the machine close to me. And the last thing I wanna mention is, if this is your first time seeing my snowman Tic Tac treat tutorial, um, this last year when I did a Christmas it was a Christmas craft fair project video. A lot of people loved my snowman Tic Tac treats, but I was making them with punches. I was actually cut, I was actually using punches to cut out the hole in the tummy and all the circles. And this year I decided to use the Brother Scan and Cut to help with the productivity because these are such a popular little gift item. Now you can get these in any checkout line at a grocery store, the bigger Tic Tacs. And these three, you can get a three pack for only $1 at the Dollar Tree stores. So that's where I got this three pack of Tic Tacs. Okay, just so you know where we're at here. Now, the other material that you'd wanna get for your, for this project is just some, some Google Eyes, Wiggle Eyes from any craft store. Get different size eyes so that you can have you make lots of different size snowmen. And just go ahead and make your own measurements and you can just make all kinds of snowmen using your Brother Scan and Cut this holiday season. So the first thing you need to do, turn on your Brother Scan and Cut and you're gonna see pattern and scan. You're gonna to go to pattern. You're gonna select the shapes. And we're gonna go down to page three of 10. I'm using scan and cut two or CM350. You're gonna select the circle shape, BA-A045. And you're gonna resize the circle. We're gonna put the larger circle on the mat first. The larger circle is two inch by two inch, or it's a circle, so just two inch. When you change the width, your height will change. Okay, just two inch circle. Set that on the mat, move it away. Now let's add another circle. We're gonna add a smaller circle. Okay, we're gonna scroll down, add a circle. Now this time the circle is going to be 1.5 inches. So this is the snowman, snowman's head. Again, we are doing the mini Tic Tacs right now. Not the super mini mini, I have even smaller Tic Tacs than this, but the kind you get from Dollar Tree. There you go, 1.5 inch. So now we're going to, first thing we're gonna do is fuse these circles or weld these two circles together. So what you wanna do is sort of overlap them like that, so, you know, slightly overlapped. And then I'm gonna go into the editing mode, which is the shapes here. And I'm going to go to the selection tool. So this is the little, three red squares. And I just wanna use this one, which just selects everything. It's the second option. So we're just gonna select all the shapes on the screen. Okay? Now, if you're not sure how far to overlap them, I just wanna show you the one I made before. So this is about how much you overlap the circles. Okay, like how I've overlapped them so that they're, so it looks like a cute snowman shape. Now, I'm gonna select them because I want to align them. 
I'm going to use this alignment feature here with the four arrows pointing in different directions. And I want to align them using this first option up here. And I want to align them vertically, meaning straight up and down in relation to each other. That's this option. It may not look like much, but we want to be perfect because you might be mass producing these for craft fairs. So you just want to be professional and make it nice and aligned. I'm going to say OK. I'm going to say OK again. And now here's something we haven't done in the last tutorial. We are going to use this tool here. We're going to weld these two shapes together, making one shape. It cannot be undone, so that's why we aligned them first, because we want to make sure they look good. And it says the pattern, it's okay to weld, and it says, you know, pattern's irreversible, and I say okay. So now we have a cute little snowman. Why, you're saying, don't you need two? Don't you need two of those? Yes, we're going to make two right now, because we only need to punch the hole through one of them. But we want to make sure we make two of these exactly the same so when we make our tic tac treats you have two of them so let's go ahead and make two i'm just going back to editing mode and i just say i want two of them that's all so we have two exact snowmen and one of them now needs to have the scallop circle in the middle of it so we're going to say okay and we're going to add that shape so go ahead and add and go back to circle or go back to shapes scroll down and we're we're selecting the scallop circle b a dash a o i don't have my reading glasses five one okay five one this time we want to make the circle only three quarters of an inch wide if you make it any larger you start to show the label of the tic tacs and so you just need a little circle 0.75 that's what we want 0.75 okay and we just say set. So now we have a circle, scallop circle. I'm going to put it on top of one of my snowmen. Move my other snowman out of the way. He's not going to get edited, that snowman. And I'm going to go, I'm going to select this and I'm going to go into this editing mode again. And this time I'm going to select, I'm going to use the selection. And I want to use this selection, which is just this one where you draw a box around the objects you want to select. So I'm using the first selection tool. And I just draw a box, a rectangle around these two shapes because I want to select the scallop circle and the snowman. I say OK. You see how we have them both selected? If you're anticipating what I'm going to do next and you think I'm going to align these two, you are correct because we are professional crafters here. We have a professional crafting machine. Let's align them. Say OK. Go to this alignment tool the four arrows facing different directions. Now go up to this align, and again, we're aligning them vertically, okay? The reason we're not aligning them horizontally like we did before is I don't want the circle to be in the middle of the snowman's body. I want the circle to just be down in the bottom in the middle somewhere. So this is the effect I'm going for. You just want the circle to be aligned vertically. Say okay, and say okay again. Now. We want to group these two together because if I move this snowman right now, the circle in its belly is going to, you know, not stick with it. We want them to be grouped as one object. So I'm going to select this tool right here, this, this grouping, okay? And I'm going to say, okay, now watch. Now I can move it around and we have a circle inside that stays with it. You can make a whole giant mat of these. Get yourself some white cardstock and just start mass producing your cute little snowman this holiday season. Okay, we're gonna say, um, what, we're gonna do one thing we didn't do in the last video, and that is we're gonna save this. Because you just did all this work. It takes you a while, you did all this work, and you should save what you've done. So go ahead and hit save. And I'm gonna save to my machine. It says, it includes a group pattern on the mat. You can't ungroup the pattern once you save it. That's okay, we don't need to ungroup the pattern. So just say okay. And we have it saved now, so you can use it again and again. For me, it's number file 77. It'll tell you what number file it is. Now we say OK. And now we're ready to cut this. So I'm going to go ahead and move this machine out of the way. And I'm going to grab my mat. And I'm grabbing a piece of typical cardstock that you get at any craft store. Just white cardstock. It's not super thick. It's just, it's just sort of standard cardstock. And I'm going to use 
I'm going to open up my blade. I'm going to show you one more tip. I'm going to use about a blade depth of five. But one more tip is I'm going to, my blade is getting dull. So I just take a piece of foil and I like to sharpen my blade now between cuts. And you're probably like, Paper Chef, why don't you get a new blade? I'm working on it. Just haven't ordered it from Amazon yet, but I need a new blade. So in the meantime, sharpen your blade, little piece of foil. I've, I've done this for years with my Cricut and it's always seemed to work. So I said, heck, let's try it with the scan and cut and it seemed to work as well. At least that makes me think it's working in my own mind. So now we're going back to about a blade depth of five, standard white cardstock from the craft store. I'm loading my blade into the blade holder. You see, just put it in there. Secure that. I'm going to go ahead and load. I'm going to put the cardstock on my non sticky mat. My mats are not very sticky. And I'm just going to go ahead and add my painter's tape, like you always see me do. In fact, it's kind of like a standard thing for me now. Needs, no matter how many new mats I get, they, do, they just lose their stickiness right away. So I'm just going to add a piece of painter's tape. By the way, I love this really thick painter's tape. Okay. I mean, it, the mat, my mat's really not sticky at all. So I had to, I have to add a lot of tape right now. I normally don't have to add this much. All right, I'm going to go ahead and, just so you don't miss any steps, I've added my painter's tape. In fact, one other thing you can do is I'm going to just take my spatula and show you. I have a spatula. This is this happens to be a Cricut spatula. And the Brother Scan and Cut came with this little spatula, but this doesn't do much for making things stick. I like to take my spatula and when my mat's not very sticky, and I like to give my mat a good rub. I use spatulas from like the pa Pampered Chef, like those, those stone to clean your stone with. I use the one from the Cricut. These are nice. Or you can use like a putty spatula. Just get it yourself a thick spatula and get that mat to stick. I'm going to open up my machine and I don't want you to miss any steps. So I'm going to show you in case you're new to the Brothers Scan and Cut. What I'm doing now is I'm just loading the mat. Okay. Put that back away. Oh, and, and now I'm just going to hit cut. And we have a blade depth of five. And we're just going to hit cut. And we're going to start. And now even while it's, even with my painter's tape, even with my spatula, I, I just, have, I've gotten in the habit of just like making sure my paper don't fall off the mat because it's too much work. I don't want it to fall off. So now we're cutting our little snowman. We're cutting the scallop circle out of the middle. And then we will assemble that part of our, okay, we just say, okay, finish cutting. Okay, and unload the mat. All right, so now we have our, to, to get things off the mat, I just sort of peel, I mean, I bend the mat, but see, I don't have to do anything because the mat doesn't stick. So I really didn't have to do anything to get this off the mat, but there's my snowman. Save these little scallops because you can use them for other things, other crafts, so save those. You could even stamp a little, you know, a little snowflake or sentiment on it. And I'm gonna even save, I'm even gonna save my painter's tape so I can reuse it because we need the painter's tape for the next part of this tutorial, but I'm gonna, so I'm gonna save it. But I'm gonna go ahead and take the white cardstock off of the mat because I don't need the white cardstock anymore. Okay, crafty friends, we'll get into the next. All right, now, one moment, stand by. <laughs> I always try to gather things near me, but I forgot to bring my rolling adhesive. So what we're going to do next is just, we're going to assemble the snowman. So just eyeball it and say, okay, you want to make sure that the snow, that you're covering, that you're letting the little snow, the little Tic Tac show through the tummy. Okay. And you, but you don't want the little fresh mints to show. So don't, don't put it there. Put it, put the, put it right there. And you also want to kind of cover it up. That's why I measured this pretty well. It looks, so now you just want to put a little bit of rolling adhesive on the back of your, let me just shut my machine for a second. Okay, you, you need to be flat when you, I just put a little bit of rolling adhesive, not much, just on the back and I'm eyeballing it. Okay, looks good, kind of centered. So there you go. So that's how you get the front of your 
Oh, looks cute. Little bellies filled with Tic Tacs. And then you just do this, put a little bit of rolling adhesive on the back. And then when I, to line these up, I just sort of, I just line them up. I just, you just eyeball them, really. But you can also line them up so the bottoms match. But remember, your, your top and your bottom are exactly the same, so you should have no problem lining them up. So that looks great. And then you can add your little, if, if you don't have the same stamps that I had, the ribbon actually looks better on the smaller snowman than it does the larger snowman. You could like, you could do a little loop-de-loop, -loop, but I'm gonna show you what I did. I mean, loop your little scarf under there. You know, get yourself seven inches of ribbon or such, and then you have some extra to work with. You could tie a bow, make yourself a little scarf out of yarn or what have you, and that would be cute, but I just used the stamped images. So, I used, well, we'll get to that. I mean, I, I'll put the nose on, but see, I just used the little scarf and the little hat from the stamped images, which I also cut out, by the way, using the brother scan and cut. But you can embellish however you choose. Okay, let's do the carrot nose, okay? So let's, let's take a piece of orange scrap paper that you have, and I know you have orange scrap paper. Let's adhere it to your mat. And just go ahead and give it some painter's tape or whatever. Get it to stay down there. I'm even putting some on the top. I'm really worried about this slipping. Okay, so there we go. Now, remember we saved the we saved this image. So I just want to say, like, you can you can exit out now because you did save it. And if you are worried about it, so. I'm just going to go home for a second and show you that because I, I don't want you to to miss any steps. I said to save it because we're going to be mass producing if you want to make a lot of these treats. So go ahead and say okay to delete all patterns because you've saved it. And even though I'm not going to cut these circles again, I just want to show you how you can retrieve your, your images. So go ahead and go to pattern and you go to your save data and you go to your machine and there's 10 pages of stuff. I'm going to go to the, I'm going to jump to the last page, and there are my snowmen. Okay, just jump to the last page. There are your snowmen, or wherever you saved them. So don't worry about deleting them off the screen, because when you save something, it'll come back again. Just wanted to let you know that, because I, you know, there's no sense me teaching you how to save if I'm not going to show you how to retrieve what you saved. Okay, but the last step is, this is what we're doing now, big overview here. Big picture is that we are making the nose. That's the big picture. <laughs> we're making this little carrot nose. So to make the carrot nose for your snowman with your brother scan and cut, you are gonna go turn on your machine and go to pattern. You're going to go to the second one, not the shapes, but the clip art, this one. And you want the second set of clip art collections and you want the one that's food items with the apple and the donut. And in there you will see a carrot. Select the carrot, say okay. Now for, I just wanted the middle of the carrot. I don't need all this fancy carrot outline. I just want the middle carrot, the piece in the middle, the B. I'm gonna say okay. I'm gonna put it on my mat. There's this gigantic carrot nose. So go ahead and go to um, edit, this little shapes, edit. And for this smaller Tic Tac treat, we are going to make our nose the height of only a half an inch, okay? And I'll even show you some other cool feature that we can do. So we have, okay, so there we have a half an inch. By the way, I never just make one carrot nose. I'm only making one because of the tutorial. But normally I'd make loads of carrot noses. I mean, I would make a 12 by 12 sheet of carrot noses. That's how many carrot noses I would make if I'm getting ready for a craft fair. So go ahead and say okay. And we say okay. Now, you got this little tiny nose right there. I told you I had a piece of... Uh, orange paper, orange, this is called Pumpkin Pie by Stampin' Up. I'm going to go ahead and load my mat. Now, I want to make sure, because I've already, I don't have, an, well, I just, let me tell you, show you. I want to make sure my carrot will fit onto the part of my mat, which has cardstock on it. So I'm going to show you background scanning. Click on this little one, and it will, this little button here, it looks like a little scanner image. It will scan, and just go ahead and say start. It will scan in my orange background, that little piece of scrap paper. That way I ensure that my carrot nose will 
will cut out onto a piece of paper that's actually there because I've already cut out a few other noses. Okay, so there's my carrot nose. Okay, and I, there's my there's my piece of orange cardstock, and I want to stick my nose anywhere on the orange cardstock. It doesn't really matter where. Well, try not to do it on where the tape is, because then it's just one more layer you have to cut through. Okay, good. There's my carrot nose. It's on the orange. I'm going to say okay. I'm going to go ahead and say cut. And once again, well, once again, we're using a blade depth of five should work. Maybe, maybe even a little higher, but I mean, five should be good. Okay, for, for cardstock of such as that. Okay, we'll try it. And we're gonna say start, and we're gonna cut out that carrot nose. And then we will assemble our cute little. Okay, so next thing it says, it says, do you wanna select the next part of the carrot? No, we're done with the carrot, so just say finish. You can also save the noses, save the carrot noses. And we're just gonna unload the mat and here we are. There's a little, little carrot nose, half an inch tall, half an inch high. And now we get to assemble. Let's get a little piece of black behind there. And within reach is my glue. So we're going to just put the eyes, just find your eyes and sort of put them there and make sure, you know, that they're used as your reference point. Okay, so you put your little eyes there. That way you know where to put your other eye. So I'm just, that one looks good. I'm going to put a little bit of, little dab of glue. You know, leave room for your scarf, your hat and all that. So your eye, you don't want your eyes too big. But if you're doing this craft with kids or at a club, craft club, let the students pick any eyes they want. It's cute to have eyes with like little wiggle eyes with eyelashes on them and they can make girls, snowmen, make, let them put hair on the snowmen, let them pick their ribbons. I mean, give them choices and let each snowman have an individual personality. And here's our nose. I just, I'm just tilting a little, tilting the eyes a little. I mean, no big, you can, you don't have to, but it kind of looks cute. Then I'm going to tilt the hat a little bit, put the little glue on the hat. And my scarf in cherry cobbler. Stamped with cherry cobbler by stamping up. Put a little bit of glue on your scarf. And I really like this so much better than having the two separate circles because it's less gluing. If I were to use the separate circles, it would be very cute as well. And I'm going to show you that as a comparison. But I mean, this is much simpler. Actually, I can move the scarf over. But I like it to the side. Actually, I like it. To the side a little so you can see in the in the tummy and let me compare our other super awesome cute tic tacs here put these like this so here we have the one i made before i had my epiphany about fusing the circles together and it's to me every bit as cute but it was just a couple extra steps because when you do that you have to then glue the circles to each other on the back and on the front and when you just make them that single shape, you're good to go. So I hope you enjoyed creating Tic Tac snowman treats and I hope you get to do this for this holiday craft fair season. Thank you for watching. Until next time, this is the Papered Chef.